So uh, today we'll cover the uh, uh, chapter one and chapter two, and so there's a chapter two handout I'll give you later. Uh, so first chapter is about the introduction of petroleum geology. So what's the role of petroleum geology in the oil exploration and oil production? So um, let's move on. So the learning objective of this chapter is to be able to describe the historical context of oil use and production in our society. So how people have been using oil and how did find how uh, could they find the oil from the reservoir. And I hope you should be able to explain five conditions for oil accumulation. So where can we find the oil uh, and the oil reservoir? And to understand the flow of the geotech geological exploration to the oil production. So how can we find the oil from the geological perspective and through the steps for the, the final step for the oil production? So that we're going to briefly talk about from this chapter. Um, so the, throughout the first millennium, asphalt and oil and asphalt were gathered from the natural seeds in many parts of the world. So. It's actually a surface oil. So if you go somewhere in the mountains and there are some seed pieces from the, uh, the surface and you find the uh, oil shale or a like, tar sand or asphaltine sand. Right? And you extract that oil to use for like medication and waterproofing for the boat. Right? So you just coat the wax of the, like, for the wooden <coughs> furniture or the boat, and uh, some some cases they use it to make a fire for the warfare. So they, for example, the Alexander the Great, he invaded India. He scattered the Indian elephant cross by charging them with horsemen waving parts of burning pits. So basically, it's like they are like waving the burning pits okay, to scare the elephants. Um, up until the mid 19th century, 19th century, asphalt oil and thereby bite products were produced only from cities and shallow pits and hand dug shafts. So they didn't use the, any like drilling hole up to this point. The first well in Western world for searching for oil appears to have been at France. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. Hetchelbron, the 17th. Um, uh, 45, and resultant products were the ammonia and sol solid paraffin wax and the liquid paraffin kerosene and coal oil. So kerosene here is uh, in Korean, dungyu, as uh, we use it for lamps, right? So the wax was used for candles and the kerosene for lamps. And kerosene became cheaper than oil. Well. So before, they used the hydrocarbon like this kind of oil product, they use the, they, uh, for lighting, they use the uh, uh, animal oil or vegetable oil, right? So whale oil was the popular one that is still widely used around the world. And at some point, because this, the surface oil was much cheaper, so that the liquid hydrocarbon expanded rapidly in the mid 19th century. So that was the, uh, uh, the historical context. And uh, before they make a deep well, deep oil production well, they developed their cable to drilling technique for the water production. So like to produce the groundwater. And actually the, the first one was, they said that it's from China. And Chinese artisan made a cable drilling tool to produce their groundwater to uh, to use it as a, a drinking water. And adopting the technology to produce the oil, and there's the uh, first well using the deep, uh, the drilling well. It's in Pennsylvania, and it's uh, <coughs> produced by Colonel Drake in 1859. So written, since that, it stimulated the growth of the oil production. And the major stimulus was, of course, the uh, combustion engine. So first in industrial revolution, right? So 1870s, 1880s, internal combustion engine stimul uh, stimulate the oil production. 
and demand for oil products were like they grew and they increased rapidly because of the First World War. And so here, by the 1920, oil industry was dominated by seven major companies from the seven sisters. So here we have the company that we know, BP, British Petroleum, and Shell, Exxon, Mobile. And here there, there were separate uh, groups, but now they're uh, merged together, right? Exxon and Mobile separately. And Gulf, Texaco, and Soco, but now it's called the Chevron. So the BP and Shell produce oil mostly from Middle East and the Far East. And Gulf, Texaco, Mobile, and Soco were uh, located in North America. So they, their major production was in the uh, South and Central America. So these are the American uh, company, and BP and Shell was originated from the European country. And you know, the uh, Saudi Aramco is now the most uh, biggest, one of the biggest oil company around the world. So after the Second World War, the post-war economic boom, oil consortia became popular for sake of avoiding risk. And European company here, and ExxonMobil, Gulf, Texaco, Soka, and Konoko, etc., etc. And along with these seven major companies, OPEC was founded. So the main role of this OPEC was to, uh, to have the uh, power for price control. So uh, Baghdad, the Iraq and Iran, and Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela, they were the uh, initial member of the OPEC organization. It is the best type of or petroleum exporting country, and later expanded to include Algeria, Dubai, Ecuador, Gabon, Indonesia, and many other countries. Um, still, the OPEC was producing two thirds of the free world oil, and the object of OPEC is to control the power of the independent oil companies by the by a combination of price control and appropriation of company assets. Mm, okay, you can read it through. So, and <coughs> then how they peop how people find the oil? Before, like in old days, oil was found by just just by luck, by serendipity. So you, you wander around the mountains area and you find the surface oil or the cities from the surface, then you're lucky, right? You, you became the millionaire, right? and. After that, from the experience, they found that the uh, oil was mostly found in creeks, not in the mountains. Mm -hmm. If you have a valley, and valley is the, uh, the better, you have a better chance in valley than the, uh, uh, the peak, and the river bottom here. So it's consistent with the anticlinal uh, anti theory. So anticlinal is, mm, so anticlinal theory shows that the, you have to have a, some structural trap right, to have an oil reservoir. So you have a better chance to find in the creeks and the river bottoms. And late 19th century to early 20s, oil exploration was based on surface mapping of anticlines and finding structural anom anomalies. So then, uh, so the homo would be what is the anticline. And in the mid 1920s, seismic survey and gravity and magnetic methods were all applied to petroleum exploration. So the phys geophysical method was uh, began to be used in, in this area. And geophysical methods, so we're going to talk about this geophysical method in chapter 3. And it includes the ball logging and electrical method and the sonic radioactive logging method and aerial survey and photographic survey too. Uh, 
and micro paleontology began to be applied. So, what is paleontology? Paleontology has a lot of what's it? It's about to finding the fossils and analyze the fossil in the sediment, sedimentary rock. So, gumi sing rock. So, you find the like, uh, the ammonite fossil or some other uh, fossils, and from that you analyze whether this is uh, uh, deposited at which area, uh, which era, right? when. When is deposited and how is it deposited? And if you find the fossil, like that means that the, in that area it was abundant with organic carbon, right? So you have a better chance to produce the uh, find the uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, okay, microfossils, ammonite, and the last one is in 1970s advances in geophysics and geochemistry were achieved. And using that, vast amounts of data could be displayed in the computers. Right? And geologists interpreted the seismic data to find the structural anomalies. So geophysicists, they go out and they like, uh, form out the dynamite and collect the uh, Data, right? For elastic wave data or EM data, electromagnetic wave data or magnetic survey, they do survey and they display the data and they invite the geologist to interpret the data and whether it's the structural anomaly is and then geologists will tell this is the point that you should drill. Right? Then you will hire the driller to drill the that location, then you can have the if you are lucky, you find the oil reservoir. Okay, so one example of the seismic data and the whole logging data. So here, let me see. So this is the uh, geological structure, the actual geological structure, and. This is the uh, logging data. So you drill the well to a hole using drill tool. And at the upper structure of the, the rod, you have a sensor. And from here, you can measure the uh, shear wave velocity or the P wave velocity or the electrical resistivity, or you can install some the um, radio isotope to measure the density, so gamma gamma ray dens densometer or something like that. And then you will have uh, this kind of a signature, and it shows the uh, how it's well compacted and uh, well uh, the porosity of the the formation, or so due or the chemistry of the pore fluid also. And seismic signatures, so this is the, from the um, elastic wave. So you excite the uh, elastic wave, and you gather the reflective waves. So from here, it shows the layers of the stratigraphy. And sometimes, if you do it, in a very long cross section, you can find some this kind of a geological structure too. So we'll talk about this geophysical method more in the chapter three. Mm. Then it's the same thing. So I have already told you the origin of oil so the most petroleum geologists believe that petroleum oil formed from the diagenesis of buried organic matter and not that it is indigenous to a sedimentary rock rather than the igneous one so if you you have to find the sedimentary basin first 
So then, then you will be able to find the source rock. And source rock means that uh, the rock that um, produced the oil. So in that rock, the organic carbon was turned into the hydrocarbon, and they can be migrated to the other like, traps of the reservoir. So the five conditions for the commercial oil accumulation is these are very important things. And we're going to actually, each chapter uh, tells you more details about each, like, these five components. So there must be an organic rich source rock to generate the oil and gas. And about this, we'll talk about more in detail in chapter 5. And the source rock must have been heated sufficiently to yield this petroleum. So from conversion, the conversion from uh, organic carbon to the hydrocarbon, you have to have uh, some pressure in the, the heat. Uh, and there must be a reservoir to contain the expelled hydrocarbon. And this reservoir must, be pro must have porosity to contain the oil and permeability to per permit fluid flow. So, so from the source rock, in general, the oil reservoir is not, you may have a the reservoir that is the same with the source rock, but typically it's different. So you have a set source rock in the deeper area, and that oil is migrated to the reservoir, it gets trapped. And from this location, you produce the oil. And the reservoir must be sealed by an impermeable cap rock to prevent the almost escape of the petroleum to the Earth's surface. Because the oil is lighter than the groundwater, so it tends to float, tends to up, uh, flow upwardly. So you need to have a structural cap. Right? So we have learned about that actually in high school. Source reservoir seal must be arranged in such a way as to trap the petroleum. So about the traps and the reservoir, we'll talk about it in chapters 6 and 7. Actually, that's going to be after the meter. So before midterm, we'll cover up to chapter 5. And after chapter 5, after the midterm, we'll talk about more about the reservoir and some traps. Jim, so far, where can you? Christine, do you have any questions or comments? You can stop me any time. Eh? Uh, so the petroleum geology is the application of geology to exploration and production of the oil and gas. And geology itself, is firmly based on chemistry, physics, and biology. Chemistry tells uh, it's about mineralogical composition of rocks and the chemical composition of pore fluid. Uh, physics is you can think of a, like large scale physics, the how the tectonics, the plate moves, and uh, if they collide, the force will be balanced, and then they can form some kind of a structure, very structural anomaly. Or you can think of the uh, physics as a uh, small scale rock physics. Like you may have a, a rock core and uh, what's inside, and uh, what will be the uh, physical behavior when you load it or if you extract the fluid from the rock. Right? Uh, also, geophysics can be a, a part of the physics. Right? And biology, is, as I told you, is a study of the fossil, uh, micropaleontology, and carbonate sediment and leaves. Right? biochemistry. So the petroleum geology and the geology itself is based on the physics and chemistry and biology. And this is, uh, has been advances to like structural geology, geophysical exploration and logging and sedimentology, and petrography, organic geochemistry, and stratigraphy and paleontology. And from here, the application is that how the sedimentary basin has been evolved. Like, uh, here, the basin is like uh, the scale of tens of kilometers. For example, the Ulum Basin, Ulum Dope, in the basin is uh, the one basin. Okay. Or Texas Basin, like the, it's the size of the one state. It's a very large scale. And structural trap and stratigraphic trap location, uh, porosity and permeability, so how they 
the how the fluid how well fluid moves and source rock and the generation of the petroleum is also <coughs> one of the application um, so then um, I think we talked about this but uh, let's let's let me just briefly explain the each terminology here so I hope you get familiar with each kind of uh, terminology right? if you are first time and if you're the newcomer um, the geophysical survey is involved in preparing the initial data which leading and later drilling recommendations are based and geological concepts are applied to the interpretation of the ge geophysical data once they have been acquired and processed mm -hmm. and petroleum engineering is concerned with est establishing the reserve of the field and distribution of the petroleum within the reservoir and the most effective way of producing it so petroleum engineering is about how to produce it economically and then petroleum geology here our main scope lies within a continuum of disciplines beginning with geophysics and ending with petroleum engineering so this chart shows you uh, like chronological or the timely order the process from the exploration to the produ production so first time if you find uh, a site that is presumed to have oil okay, and geologists will recommend the site then the geophysics go and do the site survey so then from the data you interpret a geologist will interpret the, the location where to drill or where, where the uh, reservoir is located they think and then you hire the drill and the first well will be drilled and to find to, to confirm the location of the oil and the, the quantity of the oil whether it's commercially producible or not and then the petroleum engineering will do their job for the effective production and economical production so it's a very and then in the so this is only the upstream part right so up to the part of production of the oil then it, you have just raw oil right the crude oil we say then you need to send it to refinery to separate the oils to, like, for the traffic and for electrical power generation or some of the chemical production like the, for medicines or not <clears throat> so that will be the downstream so let's go over to here mm -mm -mm. so up to this part the production part is the upstream, upstream. and here from the refinery to the uh, customer is for the downstream downstream engineering and here in the middle is the midstream engineering or the midstream industry for the transportation So that's the overview of the textbook, uh, introduction and physical and chemical properties of petroleum and method of exploration in chapter three. This is about the uh, geophysical methods that uh, I'll introduce a little bit, and subsurface environment and generation and migration of the petroleum. How the petroleum is produced from the source rock and how they migrate to the to the traps and after the midterm we'll talk about the reservoir so the porosity and microporosity or the porosity distribution of the source of the reservoir rock and permeability reservoir quality and production methods and chapter 7 is about traps and seals and sedimentary basin in chapter 8 and chapter 9 we'll talk about a little bit about the non-conventional petroleum resources so uh, 
like the shale gas or the shale oil or the is it, oil sand or gas hydrate are included in this unconventional petroleum, unconventional hydrocarbon, and just a test. Then we'll, we are uh, done with this book. Now, okay, this is just for your reference. Uh, to be of just to familiar to be familiarized with this kind of a terminology, the Paleozoic, Cosengde, Mesozoic, Jungengde, Cenozoic, and Simhengde. The homework, the first homework is by next Wednesday, the research anticline structures, and read the chapter three and derive four important questions.